Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and today Robert and I have cooked up a very special video for you, making a tier list ranking of every single one of our LEGO Masters Season 4 builds. Through 10 episodes on the biggest LEGO building show in the United States, we somehow clinched the prize. But how would we rank our builds? A, B, C, F? And are we gonna agree with those rankings? Find out now. Okay, so we are here to basically rank all of the builds that we made throughout this entire season of LEGO Masters, episodes 1 to 10. What are our opinions, honest opinions, on our own builds? Yeah, I am super excited. I think we definitely have some things we agree on and some I'm things I'm sure we, we have disagree on some. A lot of disagreements on some. Very some curious. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, tier list is going to go as follows. We're going to do A, B, C, and F are the tiers. Wait, no, we need S tier. Oh, we need S tier? Okay, yeah. okay. Um, so, episode one, we built the Pitch Party Pagoda Pontoon. It was a boat-themed challenge, and the requirements was that it has to float, you have to be able to drive it around the lake, and those were basic... Oh, and it has to be a party, obviously. So what we built was the Pitch Party Pagoda Pontoon, which was... A bit of a hodgepodge of a lot of different ideas. It was a build that had to represent our team. So coming into the competition, we wanted to establish ourselves as entrepreneurs, as startup founders. So we were like, how do we visually depict us as entrepreneurs and founders in a build? And that kind of came in the form of pitching. So we had pitches, literally like a pitch party going on. We had unicorn mastheads, because obviously a unicorn is a million dollar startup. We had literally rocket boosters on the sides, kind of like launching our startup into the stratosphere. There was a shark tank in the back. We had a networking area as well. And then we also wanted to introduce a bit of our Asian heritage. So we built this pagoda in the center, which was very, very intricate, took a lot of time. I think it took me personally like five hours just to make that pagoda. But we wanted to kind of theme it around the Asian theming. And then, of course, it had to be a party. So much like many dreams that I have, people were spinning around and just throwing money at us in the front of the boat. Um, which was obviously, I mean, obviously everyone's, everyone's wet dream, but mine especially, uh, was having that party aspect yeah. being integrated into the build. And altogether, that made for a very interesting looking build, but maybe not the most cohesive. Yeah. I'd say I would give the Pitch Party Pagoda Pontoon a B. I would actually agree. Okay. We should say our rankings at the same time for the future ones, but I okay. actually would agree. I think it's a B. I'm personally very proud of a lot of the little things that we did. We were able to integrate the, the BTS set dancing motion very, very seamlessly, I would say, into the front of the build. Mm -hmm. And the pagoda was very detailed, and you also were able to build up really nice rock detailing and then the pools and everything. But I also feel like it's really cluttered, and the concept does not make sense without, like, a 10-minute explanation. Yeah. So, I think B is fair. I yeah. think B is pretty fair. I think technique, we got that down. You got that down, especially, <laughs> like, the pagoda, like, the unicorn heads at the front. Um, you know, I think, the, like, the Japanese gardens in the middle was also pretty cool. I think, like, but I think... The bigger picture is, again, like you said, story was not there. Like, unless you gave an actual pitch for it, yeah. no one would have any idea what the heck we just built. It just Ironic. Like, like a, like a bit. <laughs> it was a pitch <laughs> built. Yeah, exactly. Like, it was just a hodgepodge of, like, random things. Yeah. Um, which, you know, we thought was cool at the time, but I think in retrospect, definitely could have been better. I think one of the biggest lessons we learned from this build was that on LEGO Masters, you need to really prioritize making big, bold icons that tell their own story without you having to say a word. And we definitely learned that after this episode, I think, to an extent. We really learned it by episode three, where I think we really nailed that concept, but yeah. still trying to figure stuff out. It was also probably our smallest build, I think. Like, it was not that big. It was probably, like, this big. Mm -hmm. um, and we spent a lot of time on, like, intricate, small details. So... Yeah. B is fair. You want to re <laughs> you want to recap episode two? Yeah, uh, episode two was the abode of fire and ice, or the abode of ice and fire, one or the other. And basically, the whole prompt was every team is paired with a kid, a kitten, and you know that kitten has their own personality. 
that you have to build a house around, right? You need to build a house that is tailored for that kitten and that kitten's personality. Um, we ended up getting Sir Fluffington, and Sir Fluffington liked the ice. He liked kind of this isolation. He's kind of like this lone wolf kind of a kitten. Um, but he also likes a warm fire um, and kind of the comfort of their own home. And so our build tried to capture that as well as we could. Yeah, how would how would you rank episode two's build? I think we should say it at the same time. So this is episode two, the abode of fire and ice. Mm -hmm. In three, two, one, F. B. B? B? Yeah. I have warmed up <laughs> this build. Wait, what? <laughs> really? Yes. Wait, okay, I'll let you elaborate first. That's yeah. quite interesting to me. I... I Perhaps I'm influenced by netizens online, but I think that like people online did love it. People online really, me. really liked it. Thank I you. Think but oh man, the closer we were to actually filming it, the worse I thought it was. But I think a lot of that was just the residual stress of building it, <laughs> um, kind of like biasing me in the wrong or in a worse direction. But I think that, like, in terms of following the prompt, we tried to build something that Sir Fluffington really liked. And, you know, we packed our thing with interactivity. We packed it with interesting color and interesting movement. Sir Fluffington ended up playing with it like crazy. He did. And, you know, I will grant that, like, it is a pretty messy build, right? If anything, Honestly, I'd say about as messy as the first build. Oh, I don't think I, I would say. Oh, I, I, like, don't know. I, I don't know about that. Like the oh. first build, like you have unicorns in front. Unless you're a startup tech person, you have no idea what unicorns are. You have a shark, a, a pool in the back. W what is that? <sighs> Japanese gardens in the middle. At least the second build, like we had the house in the middle, the ice in, in the in, on the sides. Okay. Like, the technique is like a little bit scattered, like blocks on the left, technic on the right, weird stuff in the middle, a mechanism in the front. But I think like it, it was a bit crowded, but I think the story made more sense than episode one and the cat like that build. So B. Okay. Okay, okay. Interesting. Uh interesting. You gave it an F. I would per okay, here's here's my <laughs> reasoning, right? So, if you look at the abode of fire and ice, what what is it? Like, I don't think, I don't even know what it is. Like, okay, I I initial, know it's yeah. Okay, the initial idea was that it, it's a house with a fireplace in it, and then you have ice on the outside. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the transition lines between the two are not okay. So let let me explain the build process for those who haven't seen the build breakdown. We started off by building completely disjointed stuff. I was building a flopping fish table. Mm -hmm. uh, for the cat to eat. Uh, you were building the fireplace and the center kind of big fish and what whatnot. And we also were trying to do some icy landscapes around the build. Uh, the Brickmasters came over. Our cat was literally jumping and running around Robert, like climbing all over him. And they were like, oh, your cat's so active, you should add platforms. Uh, so we were like, oh, shoot. Okay, what do we do? Let's add platforms on the icy side. I built these very intricate Technic upside down studs platforms with like snow designs on them which look a little bit weird. Like, they're not very cohesive. Like, they're kind of like a mess of Technic. And then, Robert, you were worried about the stability of those. Yeah. So you built, like, cubes? <laughs> Minecraft. Like, you built, like, Minecraft-looking blocks <laughs> that were just stacked on the other Interlocked. They, they were interlocked. And safe. <laughs> they were interlocked, and they were safe for the kitten. <laughs> Mine were, too. Yes. <laughs> but True. I feel like with the build, it's not just clashing aesthetics for me there's clashing build techniques there's clashing build styles the only thing that i think saved the build and and prevented us from being bottom two in that episode was we had a backdrop which you built at the very literally the last like hour and a half robert swooped in and was like we need to tie this together he built a floor which made it feel more cohesive because otherwise it was like a random collection of a table a fireplace and two platforms unconnected, like four <laughs> random like things. So you built a floor that connected it all, which was great. 
And then you built the backdrop, which was really good because you built a 2D backdrop of like a house and mountains. And I feel like that made the scene a little better, but... For F? I, I, I don't, I just was really, I remember walking out and just being very disappointed. Uh-huh. Maybe we could compromise and say C. Maybe. You said B. Sure. I said F. Sure. I think we can put it in C. C tier. C tier. C tier? Okay. okay. I think, I think that really showed that we had a lot to improve on. Because I feel like a lot of the future builds, I would like rank them really high. And I, I'm trying to like weigh it, right? That's true. In comparison to what we built afterwards, like obviously there was, there was the duck brick sweep on the last few episodes. I'm pretty proud of what we built in the latter half. This was like, oh, I don't want to think about that one again. That's fair. That's fair. See. But speaking of good builds, let's go on to episode three. Yeah. So for episode three, we made the Jungle Bastion of the Sun. The prompt of the challenge was to build a volcano that actually erupts and have some sort of a moving function built in when the lava flows through your volcano. We also had to build the build based on the environment of jungle, which I'm very happy we got because we got to make a massive tribal island dedicated to one of my favorite classic Lego themes. Y'all know which one it is. And this was so much fun. We had a gigantic tribal mask at the top of the mountain, lava pouring out of the mask, cascading down, filling up these calderas and pools to cause these statues to come to life, literally having doors swing open to cause the statues to face the invaders, this was so much fun. We put a lot of love into it, a lot of heart, and I feel like in this build, we finally came together as a team where you were focusing on what you do best, which is building big, massive sculptures that rise out of the ground and, and like some, and like organic shapes, whether it be animals or, or volcanoes or mountains, you could really just lay those bricks together. And then I focused on small details like the tan temple and having the jungle sanctuary in the center and the little statues in the front. I feel like this build is probably, it may actually be my favorite build of the entire season. And that includes the finale. I, I think I might even rank it above that for me, right. but I'm, I'm clear, clearly biased, uh, so, so maybe that adds some factor, but now, do you want to share our rankings? Yeah. Three, two, one, A. S. Okay. Okay. I'll let you ex explain first. Sure. I think this was an amazing build. I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. I think the one thing that is, like, stopping me from making it an S tier build is how the lava like interacted with the build. I think that like the water wheel didn't work. I think the two doors opening was a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> it to be honest, I liked it. But all, I, all right, fair, fair. And fair. um yeah, and then I think like the temple in the middle that you built gorgeous. I think the volcano pretty good as Dude, well. Volcano was really I think good also yeah, yeah, like was, quite big, great, yeah. cool. I think a li one of the big weaknesses that I did not like about the build, and maybe I'm nitpicking here, is like from the front, amazing. Side, amazing. If you look down on the build, it immediately shows less polish. I don't know if like... Oh, yeah, you're right. There are some shots in the episode looking down at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah like we can show that, yeah. the... The, the center looks great, the volcano looks great, but that U shape on the side is just tan and empty, oh, like that's from the fair. top. Um, yeah. Which obviously it was for the lava to flow down, but I think like given a little bit more time, I think we could have polished that up and somehow added a little bit more stuff there. But overall, A tier, I think like obviously, obviously like we placed top two and also like the volcano is massive, the jungle in the middle is like beautiful and i think the front shot which is honestly the shot that matters looks freaking amazing um it's just like the little things i think to stop it from being s honestly honestly that's fair like my s tier is definitely biased because i think honestly my biggest problem with the build is not even one of the ones that you mentioned it's that if you look at it from the front there's just a tan rectangle oh, yeah. in the front in the front of the mountain and I think the reasoning behind that, initially we were going to build like a whole building out of there, but we ran out of time and we were like, oh, it's just like a rectangle and I'll put like some archways in front of it. Um, but the archways were nice, they were like curved, but then you have this tan rectangle right below the mask. And I, if I were to build it again, I really would change that. Like, yeah. just, I would make it the color of a volcano. 
That's it. Or at least just round out. Or like, round the out corner, the top. Like, yeah, like yeah. round out the corners. Yeah. It's just <sighs> Yeah, it was it was time, and I think we got like tunnel vision in like stack, stack, stacking tan in yeah. a in a wall, and then we were like, oh, we're at the top. Just cut it off. Yeah. Um I would have yeah, I would have yeah. loved to have like a more like interesting flow of lava. I remember at the at least one of the things I was envisioning in the front for the lava flow is almost like a Minas Tirith like jutting thing and then it would like waterfall down the sides. Oh, I remember you were trying to propose yeah. that. But I, yeah. we ran out of time and there wasn't also enough space at the front to do that. But, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair. I think I'll compromise. We'll say A for this a. one. Okay. Because out of all the builds we made, I think this is the one I want to rebuild the most. Yeah. Other than, like, I, I'd like to rebuild the plane, but, like, uh, contrary to popular opinion, I'm not made of money. I don't think it's, like, going to be possible <laughs> in my lifetime to rebuild the plane. So, like, yeah, okay. This one may be doable. Very like, good. it'll probably cost me, like, $1,000? Yeah. 2000 Maybe? Bricks alone? I, I think I could do it. Like, I would spend that to, like, have this build. So I might rebuild it, and I, I, I want to polish things up. So, okay, it's it's a few steps away from an S-tier build on LEGO Masters, for my uh, at least for us, in my opinion. So, okay, A, fair enough. All right, so we've got A, B, and C so far. Interesting, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have, yeah, yeah, uh, no, the first one... Was B. Was B, right. It was B, C, C A. a. Okay, all right, pretty, pretty even spread. Okay, okay. I don't think we're going to get any Fs at this point. Our worst build... Can we agree our worst build was episode two? Oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, we cannot. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll get see, there. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. All right. I right. Oh, no. Yeah. no. <laughs> I forgot. Dude, I blotted that from my memory. <laughs> oh, my. Anyway, all right. We, we still got one more episode before we hit that. Why don't you recap episode four? You know, episode four was our alien invasion part two electric boogaloo um it was you know the whole challenge was basically we had to build something out of a noise right what did that noise look like as a lego super super abstract challenge and so we ended up building this enormous saucer like alien spaceship with lasers shooting out like this big tractor beam sucking up livestock sucking up people and farmers you know, this massive saucer sucking up livestock, sucking up pieces of the farm, um, house, and other minifigures. There was like a little alien battle happening on the ground. There was a farmhouse getting destroyed. It was an interesting build. Um, I, I wouldn't love it, but... <laughs> it was... Yeah, rankings on this are going to be interesting, because I'm personally torn between two. But we can say it in... Three, two, one, C. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. So, I liked the concept behind the build. Uh, Alien Conquest Two Electric Boogaloo was was quite a fun one. I think in execution, we ran out of time on too many things and had to make too many compromises for me to be very happy with this build. Yeah. So, initially, we had a very grand plan of a huge alien saucer sucking up bits and pieces of a, a barn. Actually, we were going to have a giant red barn. It was hovering above. Mm -hmm. And that barn was going to be actually like lifting into it, like pieces of the barn going into the saucer. And then we would have the farmers in like battle machines, like XO4 style battle machines, yeah. ready at, at like ready to combat, surrounding it, kind of beating back the alien and trying to rescue their cows. And then as time went on, things were taking double the time that we were expecting them to take and and more and more it became very apparent that we just weren't going to be able to realize it because it was going to be a barn we were going to have a forest area like with trees even bending towards the the ufo we were even have, gonna have the farmhouse or like the kind of the, the side farmhouse and eventually all we were able to build was the farmhouse because you started with that yep no barn no forest and the battle machines are pretty weak like one of them is like mid and the other ones, in my opinion, are, like, awful. And the reason for that is because I, I literally had, I think, I was down to the last second building one of them. I think one of the battle machines I built in, like, eight minutes, I remember. Eight minutes on the clock. Maybe five. 
Like, I was just scrambling to put something together, and I remember the big problem we had with this was there was too much empty space. Yeah. We were given a big green platform, and we spent all our time building this giant UFO in the air, but then we just had, like, a flat base plane. Yeah. And that was a huge issue. Yeah, I think out of all the builds, I wouldn't say necessarily that this was our least polished build, but I do think that... It, it was not our least polished. Yeah, I don't... But it's close. It's, it's, <laughs> it's close! <laughs> yeah, I, like... <sighs> Like, what exactly is this build? I feel like, from a technique perspective, it's really that technic frame that you built. Oh, the, the techniques I'm actually quite proud of. Like, the, the train tracks is for the UFO, yeah. the, the tr like, the treads being used to suck people up. Yeah. I'm really happy with the building techniques, but, yeah. like, the final build, oh. I, it's, it's hard to say, like, like, what we could have done better, given, like, how we could have prioritized things better I, yeah. I i i am i'm still debate like could should we have made the ufo smaller i don't think so no i think we did the best we could in 10. yeah if we had 20 hours i can think of a oh, million yeah. things we do oh better. yeah um but, but in 10 i like i don't like we spent so much time on the ufo just with the gray tiles like that was like a nightmare um, i know what we could have done better yeah not done two sides of the beam moving at different speeds you think just one? Yeah. What, what, like, a crazily, stupidly over-engineered part of the build yeah. was that we built the tractor beam, or I built the tractor beam, such that one side was going faster than the other side, because the other side was sucking up cows, so it's moving slower, because cows are bigger than people, and the other one was sucking up people. Yeah. And we implemented it, but, like, that's not obvious. Like, you, you don't notice that. Like... I think I even said, it, like, it, it's not, like, that's not something you notice. And that took me, I remember, like, double the time it expected because getting the gear ratio to work from one side to another and making both treads move smoothly was, like, a nightmare. Yeah. So that was, that was a waste of time. I think I could have got, I could have bought us probably two hours by not doing that. Two hours could have done a lot. Two hours could have made really good battle machines got rid of the stupid watchtower, which you really didn't like. <laughs> the, the, like, the, the Sentai yeah, Fortress yeah, yeah, yeah. watchtower. Um, <laughs> that we could have not had to do that. I, I probably could have built, like, a barn or a forest in two hours. I think I think that's the big mistake. Okay, that might be. That might be it. But otherwise, we were pretty optimized. Yeah, I think so. I, yeah, I think C, I think it's really just the lack of polish, as you said. Yeah. Like, we had a lot of ambitions of, at least, I really wanted to build, like, a really pretty landscape Dude, on the Dude, you were, you were, like, even with like, an hour left, <laughs> my guy, you were like, oh, I could still build a forest. And I was I, like, I, I bro, build, no, you like, can't. I want to build a river with a bridge and, like, a yeah. nice dark forest with farmers running into there it. no way. And the, just never realized we ended up with just studs. And then, like, I remember at the last second, we we're grasping, like, trees, such as Leo trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just plonk them <laughs> randomly down like oh I'm green like it was so like unpolished yeah um but as you said I think the techniques are great yeah um uh, oh I I also hate the laser like I built the laser but like the laser was so blocky and disgusting no all right here's one thing we could have done <laughs> we built the laser and then you were like this looks awful and you <laughs> took it apart and spent another two hours building it again and to me it looked <laughs> identical to, to what you took you were like this looks bad and i was like okay it doesn't look that bad i agree it looks like not that good but i, I think it looks fine and you were like no i can redo it and you redid it and you didn't change anything <laughs> no, i was I like what are you doing <laughs> i i don't think you did like i i genuinely don't. <laughs> that okay two hours there two hours from we both each wasted two hours yeah. Four extra hours on this build, we could have made this so good. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest flaw. Yeah. Just, you could have left the it's laser, just, man. You yeah. could have left the laser. I think they're just like perfectionism and like, ugh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Ugh. C, C. I think C for this one. C is fair. Honestly, looking back, I was actually more happy with this build than I was with the cat build, but now that I think of it, they're kind of on the same tier for me. Like, this one might even be a little lower, like, now I think of it. But, again, we'll, we'll have to... I think C is fair. They're on the yeah. same level. All right. I guess I'm up to recap episode... Oh, episode five. We're not at the nightmare yet. 
No. Five was fine. Okay, let's get into five. So for episode five, LEGO Masters did something very interesting. They've done it sometimes before where people team up in super teams, but here it was just a straight half in the middle split. Episode five was the Cirque du Soleil challenge. We made Solar Serenade, Pas de Deux, and one thing that was very interesting about this was that we each spent, or at least I spent, a lot of this build focusing on helping other people with stuff, and then other people spent significant chunks of their time helping us build our stuff. Yeah. So I feel like I almost don't know how to rank this build, because I would say only like 80% of it is actually ours. So here's the thing. You, you mean like... 25% of it. Eventually. No, I'm talking about our segment, our our, our chunk. Oh, true. Right? True, true. Yeah. So, we'll, we'll rank this in terms of what we personally built, which was everything in our quadrant except for the pillars, which were all Sam, and the front rounded piece, which was, I think that was Ben and Poppy. Yep. Um, so, what we did were the, the spinning planets, the studs on the side, kaleidoscope color for the solar system, and then my stupidly over-engineered orrery hanging above with the spinning figures. And there was a lot of turmoil on this build. There was. Because we pivoted like four times, I think. Like significant. And it was back and forth pivots too. <laughs> yeah. It was like, oh, it's possible. Oh, wait, never mind. It's not. Oh, but we, we could do this to make it possible. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, we could do this other thing. Never mind. Just make them spin. It was a lot. I, I, I it was a lot. Um, I don't even know how to... So to recap this build, what we made was a sun and moon romance story inspired build, which was kind of the common thread throughout all of our super team builds, yeah. where specifically for our, our challenge was to make something related to flight. Um, so our initial idea was very ambitious to have an orrery up at the top, an orrery up at the bottom. Uh, if you don't know, an orrery is basically like a realistic moving mechanism of the solar system. Or you have one thing spinning in place and another thing spinning around it, but also spinning at the same time. So we were like, oh, like the moon is orbiting the sun. Doesn't make sense in the, in the sky, but it makes sense for our story. Um, and eventually what we built were two very large spinning <laughs> spheres. That was, that was all you, man. Uh, spinning on the bottom for the sun and moon. And then we built two figures up at the top, the sun and moon figures, which I, I did design and build all the figures. I'm very happy with use, using the crabs mm -hmm. on the shoulders. Um, but we built the two figures, and then I actually got the orrery to work upside down to have the figures spin around after much fiddling and, like, a lot of worry they would fall. And for much of the build, we thought it was not possible to do the spinning figures. Um, which resulted in our build being kind of, like, empty. Yeah, I would say. So before we get too deep into it, I think we should say the ranking. Yeah. Three, two, one, F. C. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. All right, you go first. Yeah, I would rank this as an F. Now, I do think, like, the teamwork of this build was awesome. Like, yes. there's so much collaboration. That was amazing. That was really great. That was awesome. But I think in terms of raw quality what we built. of output. Yeah, this is of, ranking of what just we what built. we built. It was, like, awful. Because, like, <laughs> what oh, exactly man. did we end up with? We ended up with two spheres that were spinning, not even connected by gears. We just had two motors, <laughs> like, just jankily stuck underneath spheres that were just spinning. Yeah. And then we had an Ori... That, okay, the Ori, to your credit, worked well. Well, the well, thing is, I built that in an hour and then wasted the rest of the nine hours, like, just messing around with it. Yeah, like... Like, I was done with that in, like... And it wasn't <laughs> even an... I was done with that in, like, 40 minutes. You're very... Yeah, exactly. And then like, I just, like... I don't know what I did like, for the rest of the ten hours. Like, I don't know. Like, the Ori... Like, hanging... Getting it hanging and working is, is awesome. It would have been cool if it was even more stable, obviously. But, I mean, like... Technically, it's a hard technical yeah, it, was, it was fairly stable. I think it was, fairly I think it was stable. like pretty stable. I, I think, yeah, but okay. Fair, I think fair, one fair. thing that I was definitely sussed out about was also the connections between the figures and the Ori. Oh, those! those I am that shocked they like, didn't fall. That on was camera. like just a stud. Like, it was two studs. Two studs. Two. Well, for one of them, it was no, no. It was two studs. It was for the both. Two studs. Okay. Two studs. Two studs. 
And so, like, what exactly... We had, what, 10 hours? Like, what exactly did we build? <laughs> what did we accomplish? Like, we accomplished... Like, first of all, the, the spheres that I built... Okay, they were spherical. But then, to make it look like the sun and the moon, I just put wedges and, like tiles on top of it like just smeared and it those boys were heavy fears. yeah and they were the sun solid. was like like it was disgusting here's why i would rank this as a c and not an f um the reason for that is because the ori i am actually kind of proud of how i was able to pull that off by just like coming up with it because yeah. there is, at the time of this recording, no official Lego Orrery set. At the time of this recording. So I didn't have, and at the time of filming. And so I didn't have anything to work off of. Like, I, I think I, I draw a lot of my building techniques from, from Lego sets that I collect. But this one I was, like, going in with just like, oh, I gotta figure this out. And I think, I mean, getting it done in, like, 40 minutes was, I was very happy about that. And I, I don't know if I could tell you what I did. Like, it's kind of a blur to me. Because I know I, I built, or I helped build most of Sam and Nina's mechanism. They built our columns, which was more time and work, so thanks. Um, I built all the figures for, I think, everyone. Maybe, maybe, like, missed a couple. But I think I built most of the figures for everyone and came up with that. But that those two things couldn't have been more than an hour and a half tops. And I think 90% of this time was trying to mount the orrery upside down to first hold the planets, and when it became blatantly obvious that wouldn't work, it was trying to mount the orrery on the ground to make the planets spin, which also didn't too, work, like, even because the, the planets moon were too was heavy. Too heavy like, yeah, even the yeah. moon was too heavy. The sun, oh, no way that was exactly. going to work. And then it was, oh god, we need to figure out how to, like, we, we need to mount this upside down or we don't have anything. And then it was just spending hours trying to make it reliably mount upside down with the motor attached on the top, which was really risky. Having the battery pack and motor on the top of the build suspended by Technic. And I think that was all I did. And, and that was like, and I remember the last, like, the last few seconds was rushing to build figures uh, for Ben and Poppy's build, but I didn't do much. Like, I, I think I built the Ori, and then I was like, up, down, up, down, up, down the entire build. But I do like the Ori, and I'm very proud of the figures. Like, using the crabs as the okay. pauldrons, very happy about okay. that. The moon icon, pretty happy. But, like, honestly, if you want to put this one in F, I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue that much. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I think the Ori, seriously impressive stuff. But I think my effort weighs that down <laughs> by, by quite a bit, because, like, the spheres were just spheres. I think I spent a lot of the time also experimenting with how do we make this thing rotate? Like, can we make yeah. the moon spin? And we were, I, like, put a wheel under the moon. Yeah, we put and a wheel. We mounted wheels under all of them. Even with yeah. the wheel, like, the moon was too heavy to spin yep. around the sun. And so we wasted so much time that... I don't know, like, I think the final output was cohesive. I think we worked with the other teams. Oh, as a well. team build, I'm very happy with it, because, I mean, all the other teams that we worked with, I think, did a really good job of tying the story yeah. together. Ours might have been one of the weakest in, in this section, but, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think, I don't know, like, I think C, if we're ranking on just the Ori, like, it'd be higher, even better than a C. But, like, I think, just by aggregate Fair. output yeah, like no, would no, i rank I, I it on the same agree. as the alien spaceship or the cat thing i no, feel like no. it's worse it's worse it's worse yeah 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 f okay there there's, you have it our first f. f build um yeah due to just us not understanding how physics work i think it's just physics yeah these i was never a good physics student my, so. me neither <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was that was that Ooh, rough episode another rough we had episode. another rough one after this one Oh yeah. You wanna, I mean, there's not much to recap on the next not one. Not much to recap on this one. Episode 6, uh, we had to build a chair. Yes. I mean, we should explain what the prompt was and how we didn't follow it. Yeah. I think that, that's the important, like, what we built, you know, we built the big chair. So, <laughs> episode 6, the prompt was, build a one-to-one -one recreation of a physical, real-life, non-Lego object, and make it look exactly like it, to such a degree that you couldn't tell it apart if you were to stare at them right next to each other. That was a prompt. 
we ended up choosing a gigantic chair for some reason. Not only just a regular four-legged chair, but a swivel chair um, that was supported by a single beam in the middle was spread across spread four legs, across four legs and wheels. Which the single beam did not touch the ground. Correct. It had to be supported by four legs sticking out on wheels. Yep. And so we had to build a life-size chair like that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing. This is what gets me the most about this challenge. My personal mocking specialty is building small and intricate things. If you ask me to recreate a real life object that's like this size or this size maybe perfectly, I think I could cook. Th that, that is like the most confident I am. I I'm not very confident in my mock making skills. But if you gave me like a camera or I don't know, like the, the clarinet or like a TV or something, and we're just like, make this, I'm pretty sure I could make that look like one to one. Like, mm -hmm. I'm very confident. So the fact that we had a golden opportunity to to do that, but didn't, <laughs> is, is baffling. To, like, I don't know why, you I know, don't know what we were thinking. I have a ranking. You have a ranking? Yep. Three, two, one, B. B. Yo! 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 Oh! Hey. Dude, I thought I had a hot take with that one. <laughs> no. Okay, no, all right, no. you go first, you go first. I think... I think, objectively speaking, <laughs> like, our chair did not look like the other chair. But, I think, like... <laughs> That's an understatement. But I think that we were constrained by what we could use, right? Like, there were tons and tons and tons of red bricks. There were not as many dark red bricks in the brick pit, right? So, and at the same time, we only had how many hours? Like 10 hours to build 10 it. 10 hours. So with only 10 hours to build it, every other, you know, building team is building something about 50 times smaller than well, what we were building. Well, almost every other. Almost every other Almost, team almost was every building something. <laughs> uh, yes, but that other team also had the golden brick, <laughs> which we did not Yes, have. yes. <laughs> so I think that um, I mean, first of all, what we did great, I think we finished it. <laughs> Given the time constraints, yeah, uh, we it, finished it. It, it, is, it finished. It yes. finished, and I think, proportionally speaking, it was correct. So the width, the height, the dimensions were all accurate yeah. and followed that prompt. I actually think the base that you focused primarily on, the swivel legs, <laughs> was very, very good. Like, it looked very, very good. It's just that no one actually pays attention to that <laughs> no when they're evaluating the chair. <laughs> no one can see it. Like, you had wheels. Like, it rolled. And, like, it, the whole thing actually swiveled. It, like, the four legs, you know, the center pillar didn't touch the ground. It distributed the weight across the four legs into the wheels. Central column thing. I thought that was amazing. Now, the top of the chair was less stellar Many because of my part. But it also wasn't done. I didn't finish the other armrest, remember? The, yeah. The graphic, like, correct. I didn't it wasn't it. also completely done. But I also think that, like, first of all, like, we, we couldn't really use as many dark red bricks as red bricks, right? So, I mean, it would never have been that color. Yes. I don't even know if one by one by five panels exist in dark red. Exactly. The large panel pieces we desperately used to build back the chair, right. they certainly didn't have them in dark red. I don't even know if they exist in dark red. So that was like, that was just like, we, we had no choice but to use bright red, and that dictated the rest of the color. Exactly. And, and I think that, like, admittedly, like, I think the worst aesthetic part of the chair is easily that big back panel piece of the chair. But at the same time, Man. I'm not sure if there was a time efficient good way to do it that would have made the, the chair physically stable because like um because all the time i spent on the base was i think needed uh ooh, maybe okay maybe not the amount of detail but the structure of it was, the structure was, was absolutely was a lot. needed yeah. but i do think that like for example if we brick built the back of the chair and did some nice sculpting yeah the chair would not have balanced 
on the chair legs. It would have tipped backwards. Yes. So the panels being there is also very much a functional aspect in the sense that like... They're light. They're extremely light. So like it's almost as if the back of the chair wasn't there. And even with those panels there, like we had to actually offset the chair by a certain X amount to make the chair actually balance. So I couldn't even imagine like with a brick built thing, it would not have worked at all, period. Yeah. So um, I think that like definitely we made a lot of compromises with the chair like a ton in terms of aesthetics and and colors and things like that but i think at the end of the day we did as close to a best a job we could yeah. given the constraints we had here's the thing my contributions to the chair equate to about like 15 percent of visual weight <laughs> <clears throat> what i built was the brown base which you can't even see and the armrests and that's all I did. You built the chair by yourself. Like the actual chair. Yeah, unfortunately. Literally yeah. by yourself. I did not touch a single brick of that as you were putting that on. I, I simply did not, did not even <laughs> consider touching it. What I will say is that from a technical perspective and from a design detail perspective, personally, I'm probably one of the most proud... Like this might be one of my most proud builds because... I really was able to capture the bottom legs, like the shaping of the legs. There are little ridges. If you look at the actual real-life chair, there's a middle ridge that's a little bit higher than the others. So I used some crazy studs on the yeah. side and like neck bracket, like wedge building techniques to make it a little bit higher at a different angle and like slopes. That was insane. Um, the, ro the rigidity and robustness of the chair, like standing on the four legs and not being supported in the bottom was really, I was proud of that. Um, and then the actual armrests, I think I, I I think those were actually really good. Like yeah. I did the whole stud on the side intricate build that captured a very unique organic rounded shape. And so I'm very proud of personally my contributions to the build. I think I was like, oh, I'm happy with those, but I think I also wasted all my time, like 10 hours on two armrests and a base. Like what was I doing? I spent way too much time on the base, for sure. I spent, I think, six I hours think on I think there's base. definitely some 80-20 rule there. I remember yeah. I was helping you build some parts of the and base. And you did help, yeah, because once I built one of the panels, I even ran out of time. I was like, Robert, can you build the yeah. other one? So I didn't even build the entire base by myself. And I remember it was, like, very complicated. Very like, complex. Like you, I mean, you got the curves very accurately, but again... Stupidly complex. Like, yeah. I'm not sure... Though it is also possible that the judges offset the awful aesthetics of the top. They didn't mention that. I don't the, think they mentioned. I don't know, that. like in their remember. internal judging. Maybe, yeah. I don't know, like because like it was beautiful, <laughs> but at the same time, like could we have cut the time in half and like made it slightly simpler at the base? Yes, one hundred percent. Cut the time in half. There. We could have shaved off four hours. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think B is fair. B is Honestly, fair. like I'm very proud of this. Going into it, we thought we would be eliminated this episode. Yeah. Um, but we were not even bottom two, which was a little surprising. Yeah. I mean, I think our biggest mistake... A surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. A but welcome yes. One. <laughs> um, I think, like, the biggest mistake that we made in this challenge was choosing the chair. Oh, yeah. It wasn't building the chair. And so I think that's really the big thing that's influencing me to put it in B. Yeah, dude, if we just yeah. picked a smaller object... <laughs> The duck brick sweep could have started on episode six if, if we just <laughs> picked a smaller object. I, we could, oh man, I could have cooked so hard. 10 yeah, hours I to rep. You. Oh man, I, I want to do that now. Anyways, on to, on to the fun stuff, on to the, the, the ones that we actually were, were sweeping on. Episode seven, which was the bag. And I remember when we walked into this, the fashion episode, we were like, oh, we're in trouble. It was like, oh, I'm in danger. Oh, yeah. Uh, because we, we don't, like... I mean, obviously, my, I, clearly a fashion icon here. But um, I, I feel like my fashion tastes are just so elevated. Of, no, it's we had no idea what we were doing. Um, but what we had to do this episode was build a bag that was themed after a season. And I think, very luckily, we were the only people to choose autumn. Which surprised... Or, or fall. because Which surprised me quite a lot. Because yeah. I think that's a very... It provides a palette for quite a lot of creativity, and, and other people chose summer or winter or spring. But we were the only ones who chose fall, which I think helped us, because we weren't building the same as something else. Um, and I feel like 
I went, personally, I went into this challenge with the mentality of, okay, we had a golden opportunity last episode to build something small with a ton of detail, and we just squandered it by being dumb. We now have a second chance to actually do that, and and that's what we did. And yeah. we built something fairly small. It was it was probably one of the smaller builds in the room, but very polished, and spent a lot of time on the polish and the detail of building the leaf, L-E-E-P-H, which was our designer maple leaf shaped handbag. Yeah. You ready for the rankings? No. Three, two, one, S. S. All right, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah all right. We're agreed on that. Yeah. S tier, S tier build. Um, I think this is my favorite build. Really? This is your favorite build? I think so. Um, This is my third favorite build. Okay. Okay. After but what volcano? We'll 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 talk about okay, that okay, later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think this is my favorite build. One, I think like I am quite happy with how the leaf turned out, and like how you know you had the outer leaf that kind of folded outward, so it was like a maple leaf that like was kind of opening up. Um, oh, you! Top. Oh, thank God you convinced me to do that. I was against that for so long. I was like, no, it's gonna look dumb. Like, it's not gonna work. And then you built you you built it like against my. You were like, whatever. I'm gonna build it anyway. And yeah. You held it there, and I was like, oh, he's cooking. <laughs> like, yeah, that so was. I think yeah, and like we. This was one of those challenges where, okay, at the end we had a rush because it fell apart. But that 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 one's on me. But like, I think that like. In general, it was, like, a really, really polished build. And, like, I thought that, like, we walked into this challenge. Like, when we finished this challenge and looked around the room, like, I was pretty confident we'd do very well. Like, Which is, I think, one of the only challenges we could I think, say that. I think it was, yeah. like, all the other challenges, like, I think... Were Even like, the ones after this one. Exactly. We were like, like ooh, I don't was, know. It's but... often a toss-up. Like, we have no idea who's going to win. We don't know if we're going to be top two or at all, right? I think this was one of the ones where we're like, I think we can safely say we're on top two yeah. and maybe even win. Yeah. I, and it was just so polished. I love the colors. The theming was very clear. Um, yeah. But it's hard for me to, I think maybe the only criticism that I give it is like probably like the clasp. There was, was a yeah. little, so I think like just we ran out of time was a on little that. bit unwieldy. Yeah. But other than that, like, I think it looked awesome. Yeah. yeah. So the prompt for the episode was to build a bag that you can carry with one hand, which we could. We You could hold it by the handle. Yeah. I wouldn't swing it around, but you could hold it by the handle. Absolutely. Uh, lift it up, and, and we could, which which we did in the modeling photo shoot. Yeah. And I honestly don't know if I had the chance, like, if the bag was sitting in front of me right now, what would I change? Just the clasp, I think. Yeah. I don't think I would change anything else. And it's very rare to walk away from a Lego Masters build and say, like, I'm happy with it. I think every build leading up to this point, I'm like, I would change that. I would change this. I would change something else. But this one, I'm like, it's, like, pretty good as is. Yeah. Um, really, really happy. The color scheme was great. I mean, Robert did all the work on the leaf shaping. Where you sat down for literally an hour... <laughs> Didn't touch Lego at all. Just sketched out leaves, and I was like, "Oh my god, we're gonna lose!" Like he has—he's not doing anything. I forgot what a maple leaf looked like. Yes. Close your eyes and try to draw a maple leaf from memory. Presuming you're not Canadian. Presuming you're not Canadian. Try to draw a maple leaf that doesn't look awful from memory. It is not easy. No, it, it's hard. Like I tried, and I was like, "Yeah, I know." I, I was like, "You asked me to do it," and I was like, "Dude, I can't picture that at all." Even right now, in my mind, as we're talking, I don't think I can picture it like i can sort of do it but only because we did the bag yeah. um so you sat down but you got the shape and you got the plates and we were able to put in so much detail like i had some crazy studs on the side techniques to have a That's stripe yellow of, of yellow around the side <sighs> yeah i i think the only thing i would change is change the yellow to keyed orange or flame yellowish orange but that was just like um we worked with the parts we had yeah exactly um so i would change the stripe to to flame yellowish orange instead of yellow that's it. Like, I don't know, make the class yeah. look better. Yeah, S tier build. Very S -tier happy about build. this. All right, <laughs> moving onwards. You want to talk about the next one? Yeah. So challenge eight was pretty interesting because it was the only challenge, perhaps in Lego Masters history, yeah, that I know of, that where the brick pit was not accessible, and each team was only allowed 
to use the pieces that were given to them. And, you know, the premise of the build is, you know, build a car, they give you a car base, and then they, you choose two cars, like, you, actually, you choose a boat and a car, smash it together, and basically you're only allowed to use the pieces from the car and the boat in forming your own RC vehicle. And then you would race that vehicle around the track. Um, I believe the most aesthetic build got pole position. And then, um, and then there was also a bunch of other rules that I don't really remember. There were rules that applied to the race that, yeah, yeah, I, I, it was it was a fun race. <laughs> um, it was a really fun build, I think. Like, and I think obviously we did a really good job in it as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add, or do you want to just go to rankings? Three, two, one. A? S. Really? This is an S for me. Okay. Yeah. I think. I think the only. I think what would you change? Okay. Given the pieces we had, we used like every piece. Yeah, I mean, like objectively speaking, I think it is an S tier build, but for some reason, it just felt too easy. <laughs> like, like we had time left over at the end. That's we had like two hours left over where like we were just sorting pieces. That's fair. But, like, at the same time, I don't know what we could have done better. I think we had a good idea at the beginning, stuck with it, executed ahead of time, and then we just chilled. I don't know. It. I feel like an S-tier build needs stress and struggle. Bro, that's a toxic <laughs> mentality. <laughs> that, that is some, like, bro, I'm, I'm getting PTSD to, like, our startup time. <laughs> like, bro, that is some, like, toxic... <laughs> Bruh, just because it came hey. okay doesn't mean it was, like, not good. I don't yeah, know. Like, that's true. Like, I, yeah. I think objectively speaking, okay, maybe, okay, maybe S tier build. I'll give you, I'll give Here, you listen, here's my reasoning, right? Yeah. We were given literally the last choice of everyone's picks, right? Yeah. Everyone got to choose their, their, the builds. And coincidentally, we were picked last. Yeah. So we were given the pieces nobody wanted. And we were able to use those pieces to build something that actually, in my opinion, looks very cool. And I cannot I think of better ways that we could have used the pieces we were given other than how we used it. Yep. If we had unlimited pieces, yeah, I would have made the jaw attach on with more than two ball joints and two <laughs> frictionless Technic pins, because that's literally all we had. Yeah. Yes, I would change up the way that the front would work. I'd probably make the cockpit in the mouth or something. I don't know, like, there's a lot of things that I would change about it, but given the pieces we had available, I remember you sorted all the pieces out, and we were sitting there staring at all the pieces we had, and we were like, we cannot use any more of these, and adding them on will only detract to the bill. Yep. Um, and that was a very happy feeling, and I'm very proud of this build, because yeah. it was actually quite robust, too. We used up a lot of technique, making it strong for the race, Obviously, we were quite aggressive in the race, so by the end of it, we didn't have much car left. But I would say that's because of my driving and less because of the robustness of the build. Like, yeah. you could take the most robust LEGO thing, but if you go, like, well, bam, bam, like, against someone else over and over again and, like, flip it and roll it, that, that's gonna break. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. And also, it was, it was only using, like, if we had access to the brick pit, I think we could have made it, like, impenetrably <laughs> strong. That's true. Um, so yeah, I think over aesthetics, design, happy with it. Like the only thing is like, we had no white pieces, so the teeth aren't white. That's a little. It's a gummy shark. But it's the gum. Yeah, it's the gums. Yeah, it's the uh, baby shark. Yeah, it's the baby Sharkatron. Um, so, yeah, Sharkatron nine thousand. Very happy with it. Honestly, yeah, I'll change my rating to an S. S? I okay. think like, yeah, I. It just it was just it was such a smooth process of building, like. It just felt, it like there were no problems during the building process. Like, yeah, really, there were none, and it just flowed, and we did very well. So yeah, I guess I guess that is the definition of an S tier build. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay, S tier. S tier. Oh, All pause. right. All right. Well, that was easy. You want to recap episode nine, right? Or is it my? It's my turn to recap episode nine. Is it? It is. Okay. Bam. Episode nine was our dragon dance roller coaster. 
And this was somewhat inspired by some of my favorite Lego action-adventure ninja-oriented themes. Also, of course, doing our completely own thing. And this was very special to us because we devised a new lift mechanism, a spiral lift, which I think at the time after the show had aired, I'd seen people do it digitally in Lego. I have still not seen someone do it physically other than us. Yeah. But maybe by the time this video comes out, someone will have figured it out. Um, but it was a very complex mechanism to get that to work, which took up probably triple the time I allotted. And I thought it wasn't going to work. And you you literally convinced me. You, you forced me to keep going. Thank God you did. Because I eventually figured it out. Uh, but a spiral lift goes up into the clouds, meets the firstborn dragon, and then plummets down in a vertical plunge, does a nice horizontal loop, which I also think is pretty unique, and then actually has motors that make the, the train stop at the station so you can change your passengers out and then send it on to the next ride. Yeah. So overall, this was another another part of the duck brick sweep of, of winning, uh, which was a great build. Uh, very happy with this one, how it turned out. Yeah, I'm curious how you would rank this one. Do you want to count it down, or are you ready? Mm. I know exactly what I would rank this at. Uh, I'm very confident in that. I, 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 I think I know exactly what I would say. Uh, but yeah, no, this was this was a fun build. I'll keep stalling until you come up with your ranking. <laughs> so this was a little baby dragon soaring up in a spiral into the clouds, going through the pagoda gates, meeting the firstborn mother of all dragons, and then crashing okay, down okay, a vertical drop. It. You got it? Okay. I got it. Three, two, one, B. A. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. You go first. I was actually almost going to rank it an S. <laughs> really? Yeah. Who? But then I was like, ah, not quite there. But really? I would, like, if I could, I'd give it an A+. Plus. Okay, wait, yeah. I definitely want to hear this then. Yeah. Um, I think that this roller coaster was also a very risky build for us. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, but I'm extremely proud of the output that we end up building. Um, Technic was almost entirely driven by you. And I think that like, it's like the differentiating factors that we had for our roller coaster was, were really, really stood out to me. Like, like we had the really interesting spiral lift that like we literally had to innovate on the spot through like stress <laughs> and like many and, rounds of testing. Exactly. So like that was unique. I think we were the only team with a, a purely vertical drop. I think it so. was like completely like 90 degree vertical. Yeah. Um, we were the only team with a weird like horizontal loop instead of like a full loop. It was like it went like a weird horizontal. Yeah. We're only team that had that. We're the only team that had a start and stop station at the front where like it loaded up and then like, then you can press go and it will start again yeah. with that. And we were the only team that had like a weird kind of, we had a cloud instead of like big bars. So I guess thematically it was also pretty interesting. So I think like just from a differentiating point and the fact that like, Technically speaking, it stood out so, so much. Yes, there were places that lacked some polish. Yes, I think there are definitely places where we could have put more, which is why I didn't make it an S. But I, I sure. do think that like it, like, it was such a strong, strong build. Um, like with some polish, like it, ugh, like, it, come on, like it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you're proud of it. I feel like wow. with me, this build is something that I have a lot of thoughts on of if I didn't spend so much time on just the lift mechanism, I feel like we could have made it. So I feel like I personally wasted a lot of time in this build. And I feel like as a result, the end result is a little bit cluttered and kind of messy. Mm -hmm. And there are motorized functions that stand out and don't look good. Like the dozens of tires and motors that we used along the sides to propel it along. There are things that I really wanted to do for this build, but we just didn't have time. We wanted to build a full pagoda on top of the, the cloud, like a huge temple, like the fire temple. We wanted to do two roller coasters in one. We wanted to have dueling coasters, both going up a spiral and dueling, like basically dragons that race each other. Um, 
And none of that really materialized just because of the timing to get the spiral coaster right. And I remember at the beginning, I spent at least two hours just messing around with trying to make a triple loop. Yeah. And eventually it just wasn't working because we didn't have enough loop pieces and I wanted to build it fully out of existing roller coaster pieces with illegal techniques to bend them. Which I've seen a lot of people do online, so I know it is possible for people to do it. When I tried it in practice, I could not get it to work every time. It would work sometimes, and then other times it would cause one piece to break or it would get jammed at one section. And I spent hours trying to make that dumb triple loop before I was like, whatever, I'll do the horizontal loop, which ended up being more unique and innovative, I think. But at what cost? Um, yeah, I mean, I do think that, like, obviously time was wasted in a sense, but I also think that, like, given it's a roller coaster challenge, it's a very physics based challenge, like, experimentation is very much part of it. Like, I don't think, like, anyone can fault you for, like, trying interesting things. Like, that's the whole point of a roller coaster, right? It's to, it's to kind of stretch the limits of what can we get this car to do? Mm. And, like, you have to play with the weights, you have to play with where the center of balance is, and play with, like, speeds. And, like, you know, I think it's just part of the game, and, like, I think that kind of experimentation has to be factored in. It's not, like, a blunder where, like, you know, <laughs> like, you spend, like, way too much time, like, building like a second part of the laser or something for like sure alien. i think it's or like, like for me like the bottom of the chair which i think i spend too much time on or stuff like that sure sure I, yeah, yeah. Mm. so <sighs> okay I, I i guess i could go up to a it, it's just like oh man like this build could have been so much better in my mind and i like i know we did win and that was really cool i just yeah i i'll say a i'll say a um but I really feel like I could have done a better job on some of the stuff I did in this build. I mean, I don't know. The, there's a lot of good ideas that we didn't have enough time to execute on because lots of time was spent. But as you said, with a heavily physics-based challenge, it had to be very experimental. Yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah. So I guess, A, I'm very proud that we were able to figure out the spiral lift that was really that was cool i'm like mildly annoyed that it exists in real life like i didn't think that was a thing that existed because we were kind of in a tunnel box throughout like that entire episode yeah. months afterwards like a few weeks ago i went to universal studios singapore and i happened upon an exact spiral lift mechanism as the one that we designed it was hanging from the top and said the bottom but the trick with that one was to stick it on the side of the roller coaster tracks parallel to the tracks, which was not intuitive to me until I tried it like the, yeah. the 15th time I tried it. If I had gone on that roller coaster before filming the show, we could have saved like six hours. Like unironically, we yeah. would have had six extra hours. Yeah. Like, and then, like, for a lot of the build, I wasn't doing math right, so I was getting the heights of the spiral wrong. You remember that. You were like, what are you doing? Because I, I, like, I was like, oh, I can't count. And you were like, bro, it's just like seven bricks. So I don't know. I feel like I was unoptimized on a lot of what I was doing for this build. And that hurt the build a lot. But overall, it, it worked out. The functions worked, so I'm happy with it. But if we had six extra hours, oh, man, we could have made a masterpiece. So I'd say A. Okay. Yeah, fair. You want to recap the last one? Finale build? Well, the finale is extremely open-ended. Um, um, 24 hours to build pretty much whatever we want. Um, except it has to be something that, you know, kind of represents us as a team again. Almost like a callback to the first episode, but bigger, better more creative, and of course, if you win, it gets turned into a Lego set. Which we did not know until we yeah, started the episode. we had no idea until yeah. actually the start of the episode, which is, which is a huge surprise and raises snakes substantially. Yes. Um, yeah, and what did we end up building? We ended up building the plane. Our theme was travel, and we, we think that, you know, obviously travel is a great place to learn new experiences, meet new cultures, um, it's a really great connecting and bonding experience as well. Um, it's, you know, we bonded a lot when we founded our startup in Italy. 
Um, you know, we have our own travel experiences when we we're younger that were very formative. Like my parents came from China. Chris had a lot of experiences in Africa. Um, and so we wanted to work with travel, right? Things that like kind of a bill that hearken to trips of past and also trips that we've hoped to go on in the future. Um, and we built a huge plane. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know your ranking? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I'm pretty confident on mine. I think we'll disagree. Really? Yeah. But we'll see. Okay. Yeah. Three, two, one, A. B. Okay. okay. B. Okay. okay. Same as last time. Then. Same as last time. Yeah. You want to elaborate on yours first? Um. So I think that out of all of the builds, this is also one of our least polished builds. Um, yeah. Like there were so many things we wanted to put in the plane that we just did not have the time to. Um, like there are little details, right? Like we wanted to have a world map on the wings of the plane. Like on the right side, there were and, and, and also make this like the middle part of the wings not just ugly technic rectangles, like actually smooth that out. Correct. I mean, like there are like so many things. Like yeah, like the edges of the wings we wanted to be almost like the Galaxy Explorer technique yeah. of like really smooth wing tips. We wanted the top of those wings that be a big world map, right? North America, South America on the left wing. Asia, Africa, Europe on the right wing. Engines, tilt, finishing Entrance. the bottom of the cockpit. Um, like, there are so many things we wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. But I think the reason I give it an A is because I think we got everything that was important finished and also at a scale that, like, I, I agree. Like, all the important stuff finished, that's fine. If it was like, you know, we built it small, then it'd be bad. But I think the fact that we were able to build it up to the scale of we did, and it was just 10 feet long, 10 foot wingspan of the dimensions of a real plane, looking like a real plane with the icons on top, I think, like, I just think that in of itself is just, in my mind, like, a really good prioritization of, of tasks of like being able to figure out like what did we have to build okay. and like time managing ourselves such that we could finish in the allotted time. Um, and I'm super, super, super proud of that. Even though, you know, it is a more unpolished build, I, I just think that the sheer volume of bricks that we put down in that time span is, is, is A worthy. <laughs> Honestly, I think you've kind of convinced me. I think I'll go for A. I mean, the reason why I initially said B is because, as you said, there were a million things we desperately wanted to include but just couldn't. And looking at the plane, especially like in the episode, and, and of course it's going to be on display in, in the New York flagship store, and of course there's now a Lego set being made based off of it. I, I always like wonder, like, there's a lot of things that I feel like really could have been improved but also i agree with you that we use the time to the best of our abilities yeah. there was one blunder that i made and that was something about the symmetry of the way i mounted the the moving mechanism i had to take it apart completely and then redo it on a different base plate because i had it in the wrong spot yeah um, i think i put it in the middle of the base plate and i was like oh shoot this needs to be on the edge and i just had to rip up everything and do it again that, however, didn't even waste me that much time because I then knew exactly how to do it. It was a lot of trial and error getting it to and work. And you also, like, hyper-optimized it, right? Like, I did hyper-optimize it. Yes, yes, I compressed so. it, so it was actually much better that I did that. So maybe that was part of the iteration process. Yeah, I think this one, it's like, I'm so happy with it, especially the cockpit. I'm pretty proud of the cockpit. Yeah. The bottom of the cockpit and the bottom of the back of the plane, really weak in my opinion. I think could have been a lot better. I, have, I know exactly how we could have made it a lot better, but I think, in my opinion, very, very weak compared to the rest of the plane. That's fair. Um, but overall, very proud of what we did, honestly. Like, a build that big, like, it was what? 
eight foot by nine foot or something. I, these numbers get bigger every time we tell the story. You're, you're but, right. It's eight feet by eight. It was ten base plates by eleven base plates. Yes. Eleven base plates in wingspan, ten base plates in length. So I think that's give or take a little bit. But actually, yeah. it's, I think it's exactly. Um, I, I mean, I think my nose cone went a little over ten base plates. Is what I'm saying. Oh, oh and like yeah, the back yeah, of yeah. the tail fin is what I'm saying. But, okay. Yeah. True. Um, but the core of it, yeah, the ten core, base plates, eleven base plates. Schematic doubt. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Um, so I think, I don't know, like building just on a bricks per second basis. Like, I can't think of anything as you said. Like, we didn't. I don't think we made any time management mistakes okay. here, and I think we prioritized perfectly. I don't know if we could have prioritized any better. Um, like, I think we got what we needed done and got it up to the size we did. Like, once we committed to the scale, we had to commit to that scale. And I think I think we executed it to about the best of ability as we could have. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think what really ties it together for me are the scenes with the mini, the mini land scale figures. That I really like that we put those in. One of those floating islands is much better than the other two, but like, uh, okay. And also, like, one of, you built the Colosseum. Yeah. Um, the Forbidden City is like, uh, I don't think I did a good job on that. The Kenyan tree was really good until I got to the top and was like, I don't have time to finish this, so I'm going to stick on a million leaves. But I think it, like, does the trick okay. Yeah. Um, overall, very happy with this build, and I think... I'm, I'm really, really proud that we were able to win. It'll become a Lego set, so stay tuned to next year for that. That's really exciting. Um, yeah, not, definitely not for me, not S tier, just because there's so much stuff that I feel unsatisfied with now that it's over, but I could do A. Yeah, I think so. Within the constraints of the time that the competition provided us, like, I don't know if given the size of play we wanted, it would have been possible to have an S tier build. Okay. Yeah. yeah, fair enough. And with that, we have summed up our tier list for all of our LEGO Masters builds. Now, before we go, top three favorite builds, third, second, first. Oh. Bag, third. Car, second. Volcano, first. For me. And I'm biased because I know the Volcano is a worse build than the other two I mentioned, but I really like the idea that we had for it, and I yeah. think that I could make it better with, like, 30 minutes. Okay. So that's my top three. What about you? I think number three for me would be the roller coaster. Okay. Number two would be... Now, I think originally I said the bag was my favorite, but mm -hmm. I think I think objectively it should be. But I'll, I'm will i going to change my mind and say that the bag is number two, and number one, I'll put the plane. Okay, that's actually quite different then. We, yeah. we actually had quite different rankings. Um, All right. Because, like, the plane unpolished, as I said, but I think that, like, yeah. I like the time management portion of it. I think I value that a lot as a point of personal pride. I think we, we yeah. managed the crap out of the final build. Yes, yes. And we I'm optimized very happy with that. to the second. Literally, Literally to the second. Yeah, we were allocating, like, here's what we will do with the last four minutes we have. Yeah. Like, if we look at all the builds as builds themselves, bag number one. But I think if we look at the builds as challenges and how well we did on the challenges, play number one. Yeah. Okay. Well, you heard it. Our rankings are quite different for those, but I think we agree on the most of the tier list rankings. Yeah. Comment down below what your tier list of our LEGO Masters builds would be. I don't know if I can make a public sharing link, but if I can, I will link your way to kind of drag them around on your own. I think there are some sites oh. that do that as shareable links, so okay. I'll try to link that in the, in the description if I can. And overall, I hope you enjoyed this pretty lengthy video of us tier ranking our LEGO Masters builds. It's been a crazy season. It was. Ten oh episodes, God. we made it. So, so much more to come, obviously with the set and with the New York unveiling and just a lot more content with LEGO Masters, which I'm so excited for, but... That about sums up this video, unless you have anything else to add. No, I don't. That was really fun. <laughs> yeah, this was a lot of fun. Honestly, probably one of my favorite videos to make in a while. So, hope you also enjoyed. Be sure to like and subscribe for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming away very soon. And, bye for now.